every quadratic equation will always have two roots. And um, if we let these two roots be a certain thing called alpha and beta, and uh, we go backwards on how we find these roots in the first place, we will get something like this. x squared minus sum of roots plus product of roots equals to zero. Spe uh, if we um, consider the, the, the general form, ax squared plus bx plus c, and uh, we say that these two are related to each other, then we can conclude that negative b over a is your sum of roots, and c over a is your product of roots. So basically, if your, if your a equals to 1, your sum of roots is the negative value of here, and your product of roots is the value here. Now, um, there are a lot of types of questions that can be done using, um, using sum and product of roots. But before I get to these useful identities, I want to go through the easiest one first, which does not require useful identities. It is called finding the other root. So what they will normally do is they will give you an equation and then they'll give you one root, but the equation has a missing variable. So in this case, it will be m. So uh, they want you to find either the other root or m. So um, normally if they ask you to find m, you need to find the other root first before you can find m. So uh, the, uh, the first thing you need to do is find out where m is. Is m here or is m here or is m here? Usually when m is here, they will give you, uh, they will give you the both roots. But if m is here, then you do here first. If m is uh, at where it's right, at right now, then you do the sum of roots first. So the first step to everything is to get it into general form, but divided by a. So here, the a is 15, divide everything by 15, and then you get your sum of roots and your product of roots. We know what we we know that the product of root is m, so uh, we uh yeah, the m is at the product of roots, so we want to find the other root first before we find m. So we do the sum of roots first. It's all just normal things that I don't need to teach. I don't have to teach you anymore. Uh, these are all junior stuff. Uh, normal calculations. You find bet you find beta, and then you find m. The other two are normally connected to each other. Uh, there's one where you form equations using new roots, and there's another one uh, uh, where you prove equations using roots. What do I mean by that? Um, what do I mean by that? Uh, the, I'll, do, I'll do number three first, because number three uh, is the easy one to explain. So um, when you're doing number three, most of the time, you, you, do not, you do not need to care about the identities or uh, any sum product of roots, but it will still use roots to find um, the equation. Like it won't involve sum and product of roots, but it's, it still involves alpha and beta. So it's still related. So I'll get this out of the way first before I get to number two, which is the meat of the topic. So um, over here, uh, they want you to prove that alpha square equals to alpha plus 5 and alpha 4 equals to 11 alpha plus 30. So these do not look like some product of roots at all. You may see, you may, you may look at it. So you need to um, think a bit more. I know it's hard to think sometimes, but like um, if you get enough sleep, if you drink enough water, you should be able to think about this. You should be able to see the pattern here. But one thing I can tell you is if they say alpha and beta are the roots of your thing, let x equals to the num to the value there. In this case, it's alpha. So if you let x equals to alpha, then you will see that you will get something that looks like this. And then um, this is one you should. Uh, this one you need to use a bit of logic. In this case, you know that uh, you have alpha and five, so you move them to the other side, and you already proved the equation. Now, uh, one thing that I got confused last time is the second part here, alpha power four. You may see, uh, you may do what I did last time. Um, I'm, what I did last time was I multiplied uh, this by itself. Like, I multiplied this whole thing by itself. That is very inefficient, and I do not recommend you to do that. Instead, what I recommend you to do is just multiply alpha square twice. So you know what alpha square is? Alpha plus 5. Just, just multiply it twice. Square it. And then you will get this. And then to prove it, you, as I said, you know what alpha square is. So you convert it back to alpha plus 5 then you add them together, 
and then you will be able to prove the, equa uh, the equation. Also, one thing that I want you to know is that alpha, alpha and beta are correlated to each other. So like, um, if alpha, uh, alpha power 4 is equal to 11 alpha plus 30, then beta power 4 is equal to 11 beta plus 30. So uh, be careful when you're playing with this one. This one, you do not need to worry about any sum or product of roots. You just have to, you just have to let x be alpha. And if you want to try, and if they want to ask you to find beta power 4 as well, you don't have to do anything. You just have to write similarly and then write the same thing over again because that is accepted since alpha and beta are basically the same thing. They are both roots. So um, the last one, which is the meat of the, of the topic, would be forming equations with new roots. So what they will ask you to do is they will give you an equation. So with the equation, you know what your sum in your product of roots are. Uh, so in this case, you get 4x squared plus 3x minus 2. Divide the whole thing by 4, and then um, and then you get your sum, you get your product of roots. Now, what they will ask you this time is that they will ask you to either uh, find out the values of certain uh, 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 combinations of alpha and beta, or they will ask you to, to make a completely different equation using, alpha, uh, using your sum and product of roots. So... Um, uh, I'll just teach you uh, this one because it's, it's basically an extended version of uh, finding combinations of alpha and beta. And what do I mean by that? Uh, they will ask you to find a new equation with roots using alpha and beta. In this case, it's alpha over beta square and beta over alpha square. So uh, product of roots, it's pretty straightforward. You just multiply them together. So when you multiply them, when you multiply them together, you'll get 1 over alpha beta. 1 over product of roots. So that was very easy. Normally, the product of roots is the easy part, the one that you don't have to worry about. The one that you really need to think about, though, would be the sum of roots because it will, you will need to memorize a few identities for you to solve questions like this. So, like, uh, I'll, I'll, get to, uh, I'll get to this. I'll get, back, I'll get back to this later. So I'm going to go through the useful identities first. They will, uh, as I said, they will ask you to either find the identity itself or they will ask you to form an equation and you need to find the, uh, you need to find the, the new sum and product of roots of that equation using these useful identities. And why are these useful? Because uh, you do not know what alpha and beta is. Remember, we are, when we're doing sum and product of roots, we usually are not able to find out what the, sub, what the, the two roots are. And even if you do know, it's usually a waste of time. And sometimes uh, we, will get, we will lose marks for it. So, um, Instead, what we do is we convert these, uh, these uh, alpha and beta combinations or identities into, uh, into forms where it uses both sum of roots and product of roots. There are a few exceptions though. For example, this one, alpha minus beta. We do not know how to find alpha minus beta. Or do we? Now, alpha minus beta uh, can be found from alpha minus beta squared. All you have to do is square root the whole thing. Then you will get alpha minus beta. And then there's another one here, alpha square minus beta square. We do not know what alpha square minus beta square is. Or do we? As you know here, number three is alpha square minus beta square. And we can find it using the sum of roots and alpha minus beta. And we know how to find alpha minus beta, which is by square rooting number two. So, um, so even though there are some um, odd stuff here, odd oddities here, like this, like this and this, we can use the, the general method to find them in the first place. So you don't have to worry about this. You just have to know, you just have to memorize the, the identities themselves. Um, and I guess, I guess that's all for the useful identities. Now I will get back into uh, forming the equation. So in this case, after we add them together, cast fractions, make them the same denominator first before adding them. Uh, as you see here, so I'm gonna do it again, alpha cube over alpha square beta square plus beta cube over alpha square beta square. So we add them together, then we will get alpha cube plus beta cube. So how do we get alpha cube plus beta cube? We go back to the identity. The, number four is very common. Number one and two are also quite common. So I recommend you to prioritize those three. In this case, we're doing number four. So number four, it is alpha plus beta, and then uh, uh, multiply by bracket, 
alpha plus beta square, uh, square minus 3 alpha beta. Sum of roots, sum of roots, and product of roots. So all you have to do is write the form out like that and then put your sum and product of roots in one by one. Or you can just put them all together like this. So in the end, it's just normal multiplication and then you will get um, sum of roots. So after you get the sum of roots and then the product of roots, the last thing that you have to do is to put them back into general form. Remember, general form does not include fractions. So if you were to sub them back in, in this case, product of roots negative 2, and sum of roots negative 99 over 16, the 16 here has to be removed. The way you can remove that is by multiplying the whole thing by 16. So you can remove the denominator. So this is your final answer. 16x squared plus 99x minus 32 equals to 0. Um, I guess the only last, uh, the only thing I can tell you now, because I basically told you almost everything that you need to know, because this is not a channel for me to explain everything now. It's just for me to explain the meat of the topic. The main thing that you need to remember, other than no fractions, is make remember that here has to be a minus. So um, yeah, remember it is x squared minus the sum of roots plus the product of roots. And the last thing, which I also forget a lot, is the x here. So I